Hi. So I made a mistake. I went down. Ah, I broke my own rule. And I went down the cesspool known as TikTok. And I immediately regretted it. But I needed to check this out because I didn't believe this was a thing that I had seen. Um, you know, as someone who has education in the realm of early childhood as well as nursing, I had to pick my jaw up off my desk. I, I really could not believe the woke parenting that um, I found. Now, just FYI, never underestimate the stupidity of the human race because I, I didn't last long on TikTok. I had, I had to close it. But for this video specifically, we're going to talk about teaching your child consent about bodily touch. Meaning, you know, someone else touching their body and they touching somebody else's body but um some of these parents are really going overboard um uh, let's see first let me say that there's nothing wrong with teaching your child assent which is different than consent as long as they understand what you're saying to them like this child are right here. We're gonna watch this. Okay, so your baby is a tiny human. You're newborn. She specifically said newborn. And this tiny human. So it needs to be able to consent and feel part of of the diaper change process well first off they are part of it whether they want to be or not because they're the ones that need to be changed <laughs> but uh, somebody explained this to me this infant can't understand a word of what is being said correct nothing what are you gonna do when this child is old enough to understand and says no I i'm curious about this are you gonna let it sit in a dirty diaper until it says yes y for how long days weeks how bad does that diaper rash need to be before you overrule your baby thereby making their non-consent worthless because you know they can say no all they want eventually it's gonna have to be a yes and eventually you're gonna have to deal with this a screaming toddler who does not want their diaper changed because sometimes kids have blowouts and you're going to have to force a diaper change whether they want it or not because the literal crap is going up their backs and down their legs. And you're going to have to deal with this screaming child who now no longer trusts you because they said no and you ignored them. And just so you know, according to various child protective services, this is known as child neglect the lack of changing your child's diaper so then we have this wonderful um one that i came up on this one 
she is teaching her six monthish old baby how yeah, just watch what you may not touch my belly button that's my body and I don't want you to touch it that way yeah you may touch your own belly button but I do not want my belly button to be touched okay no. Yes, I am in charge of my body, and you are in charge of your body, and right now I don't want my body to be touched on my belly button. No. Yeah, okay? So you, you can touch your belly button, because that's your body, but I don't want my body to be touched right now. Yes, okay? Oh, really? Do you want your bottle? Let's make it. What? Okay, so it just replays from that point. I don't know if you caught that, but she said they took a shower together. And then he touched her belly button. Seeing that this is a young child, I'm assuming she was holding him. So he was touching her belly button already, along with... um other areas but now that they're out of the shower this child who has no idea what she's saying is being told that even though he just took a shower with mom he can't touch her belly button now obviously this baby doesn't understand a single word he obviously doesn't care one way or another at this point in time uh, the mom is teaching him, as she said, if you read the screen, because she doesn't like her belly button touched. Now, here's my thing. This baby isn't a stranger or her partner who may be annoying her. He's her child. Now, when I raised my kids, I didn't like it when my kids were learning how to kiss. And, you know, when they do that open mouth tongue hanging out slobber fest type of kiss you know what I mean and it would just leave all of this drool all over your face and you would you know you you'd have to wipe yourself off with a towel afterwards but however you know I was grateful that my kids were trying to show affection. I was grateful that, you know, to be honest, I mean, when a baby learns how to kiss, it's just freaking adorable. Um, I love that they were showing me affection. I loved when they played with my hair or my toes or even my belly button because they were exploring their world. They were learning about touch. They And that's just, you know, how babies did it. And even though I didn't like that type of kissing, and uh, as a mother, I allowed it because baby's touch is very important. You know, it's how they learn. So I knew this. I knew they were learning how to kiss, and I knew they didn't have the understanding or the muscle control on how to actually make you know, a kiss of them. And I welcomed it also because I knew in the future that my allowing them to show me affection and touch would turn them into adults who would be willing to show affection and touch others. Now, my son that loves me will, will lives with me will walk by and drop a kiss on my face or the top of my head. My youngest daughter, when she visits, she'll randomly walk up and wrap her arms around me because she just wants to hug her mom all my kids do this well except for the marine but he's always been a bit standoffish half the time I'm in pain from health issues and they used to ask me if it was okay and I'm like kids I don't care if you hug me I love it when you hug me and if I'm in pain I'll just tell you to be gentle and they respect that because they're old enough to understand. Babies don't understand a thing. 
but can you imagine if I said, no, you can't touch me without my permission? Mom, can I hug you? Mom, can I kiss your head? Mom, can I put my arm around you? Mom, can I hold your hand? I mean, it just takes the whole spontaneity away. So I would no longer get that pleasant surprise when one of my kids comes up behind me and wraps her arms around my shoulders while I'm sitting down somewhere. Or grabbing my hand if we're walking through a store. I mean, even my adult children still do this. And if you had to ask your parent every single time, you know what? I'd just give up and bypass doing it. To me, it would get old and I would just really just be done. So if we go back to the belly button baby, um, you know, babies touch. As I said, that's how they learn about their world. I mean, if he could, he'd probably try to eat her belly button as well because babies, they use their mouths. They put everything in their mouths until they are older. You know, and sometimes they don't stop because every once in a while I'll catch one of my sons and I'm like, what are you putting in your mouth? You're an adult. <laughs> Now, if some mother is doing this, if this mother is doing this, I should say, for, you know, just once in a while, it's really not going to affect the baby. It's not going to be a big deal. Uh, for all I know, you know, maybe she just did this video for TikTok clout, but what if she does this stuff all the time? Um, because it does say right on the screen through that video that she this is one way she teaches him about consent now there are studies that are done all the time there's studies going back decades about what a detrimental effect a lack of touch has on a child the lack of even parental warmth it doesn't necessarily have to be touch it could be just parental warmth. It causes not only mental issues, but it causes physical issues as well. It can cause high cortisol levels, which, you know, just you get that whole stress reaction going. And at a young age, that's not a good thing at all. But let me stress again, there is a difference between assent and consent. But assent is also the wrong word because young children can't assent or consent due to the fact that they don't understand the ramifications of what you're talking about. It's also a bit of a tightrope walk because we all want our kids to be safe. We don't want our sons being accused of something they didn't do. We don't want our sons or daughters being in positions where they can't defend themselves, where they're afraid to say something. But, you know, we, we just want to give the, our kids the tools they need to protect themselves. We want them to be able to tell Uncle Ray that, no, he's not allowed to touch you there. But you have to know when it's okay to ask for consent or assent and when it isn't. You know, like, let's see, here. A man is trying to grab them off the street. Sweetheart, baby doll, scream for all your worth. And I don't mean just, ah, I mean scream. This person isn't my dad or my mom. This person is not someone, I don't know you. You're not my parent. The goal is for them to let others around them, hopefully other adults, know that this person is not supposed to be with them and that something is wrong and they need to step in and help this child. Okay, so then you have those parents who tickle their kids until they literally can't breathe. My mom would do that to the, me and to this day, I hate being tickled. So when I tickled my kids, if they said stop, I would stop. So kind of like this woman right here, Let's watch what she does. Um, oh, let me start it over because I did partially watch it. I'm going to get you. No. No? You don't want me to get you? No. Okay, I'll stop. Mommy. 
Mommy, what? Do you want me to get you? No. No? Okay. What do you want me to do? So that was nice and simple. That was, you know, the child didn't want to be chased. The child didn't want to be tickled, which is absolutely fine. That type of thing, no problem. And I will say that you have to know your child. You have to know what they can tolerate and what they don't want like. And I, you know, I did this type of thing with my kids before it became a woke parenting thing about consent. If a child was laughing, I'd creep closer and go, are you sure? Are you sure? You know, if the child kept laughing, you know, we, you just get your own game going with your kids. You learn your kids, you learn what they like, what they don't like. So, you know, and you learn their tone of voice. So if I'm playing with one of my, or, you know, when they were little, if I was playing with one of my children and there wasn't like an almost angry no, I'd stop. There's, you know, there's no reason to push that. And if they use that tone, it was actually not normal for them. So I'd be like, okay, what's going on? Are you okay? Do you not feel good? Are you tired? And then, you know, sometimes we just go lay down and or go watch a movie together. You know, you just learn your own child. Now, if that one both ways when they were older if they wanted to tickle me and I'd be mommy doesn't feel good they would be like oh no mommy you okay and I'm like I just want to lay down for a little bit do you want to lay down with me and watch a movie type of thing I wouldn't be like ah stop touching me you know type of thing so then I saw let me get this uh doctor on TikTok as well and I was just a little confused here. Symptoms that you're having, I think it's a good idea if I take a look inside of your underwear. And that is okay because I am your... Yeah, exactly. I'm your doctor. And who's here to keep you safe? You're right. Mom, dad, whatever adult they brought with them. Because whose body is this? That's, not That's right. This is personally. your body. With that being said, is it okay if I go ahead and take a look? Thank you. If they say no, you can always come back later, depending on the urgency of the exam. Um, obviously, this type of consent is a little different from typical consent because there are times, unfortunately, where we must look. Um, I got all this from an amazing preceptor I had. Um, okay, so I'm going to stop it there because then she just talks about how she was taught. But she said, unfortunately, we have to look. Well, this child has already told her no. So, you know, in general, I don't have an issue with this. It is good to explain to children what's going to happen, unless it involves needles, and usually you don't want to explain that part because then they just completely freak out. But a lot of fear from people in general comes from the fear of the unknown. So, I mean, okay, so my doctors explain stuff to me and I'm a grown-up. And I, I don't mind it. Uh, to me, it's like fine. But, uh, okay, so asking if a child has someone who can come into the room with them who makes them feel safe, to me, is a good thing. Because, unfortunately, not every parent or guardian makes a child feel safe. Which is sad, but it is a reality. And taking your child to a doctor who allows you to come into the room, to me, is very important. My kids were taught, and this is both boys and girls, that I will come into the room to advocate for them. Not because I want to know what's going on in their life, which, of course, I do. I'm their parent. But um, just because sometimes there are bad doctors out there, and we've had a run-in with a few of them. Uh, not like a doctor who does an assault on any of them, but unfortunately I know others have had that experience. I had to get a drink of water. Um, 
But once my children felt comfortable advocating for themselves, because I went over the doctor's appointment with them. Okay, you're going in because your ears are hurting. They're going to look in your ears with this thing called an otoscope. And, you know, if I had a picture of it, I would show it to them. And I said, but that's all they're going to do. They shouldn't be looking. They might listen, you know, they'll listen to your heart. They'll take your temperature, blah, blah, blah. You know, just a normal doctor visit thing. But if they say they need to look down below, that's a no. They don't need to do that. Um, obviously, in age-appropriate language, we would go over that. But as they grew, they would tell me, okay, I'm, you know, once they felt comfortable advocating for themselves, they would let me know that they wanted to go in alone. And I'd wait in the waiting room because, you know, they need to grow up. They need to handle things themselves at some point. But I let them set when they were ready. Some kids were ready, like, right off the bat. Others took a little bit longer, and that's perfectly fine. Everyone, every child develops at their own rate. So I also told them, and I do think this is important to teach your kids, that if they're at a doctor's, a dentist, wherever, anywhere, and they don't feel safe, get up and walk out. Just don't even, you don't have to apologize. You don't have to do anything. Just say, I need to leave and get up and leave. Um, so my issue again with this is with this doctor, what if the child never says yes? Now I'm a woman, obviously, and I still say no to a pelvic exam because I hate them with a passion. But as an adult, I know that if I don't get them done, things can go really bad before I become aware of it. Um, as an instance, you know, a lot of cancers and stuff can develop. And by the time you feel something is wrong or you start feeling pain, it's too late or close to too late. And you have a fight on your hands to survive. So if there's a situation where the child is just like, no, 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 but there's a serious issue and you have to override that no, you've now lost the trust of this child. And not only that, you've instilled a distrust of doctors. So yes, we do need to teach our children the, about the rights to their own bodies within reason, but we also need to teach them in a way that doesn't set them and us up for failure. It needs to be age appropriate. We need to make sure we're taking a balanced approach. We're not instilling fear in them. It's just really, it's actually I don't say it's kind of sad that we have to talk about this because this has been going on for decades, you know, centuries. People have, in some cultures, it's considered normal. But small children cannot consent. Now, in this video, we're talking about physical touch. And normal parental physical touch doesn't require consent. You're legally allowed to touch your child everywhere in order to care for your child. Studies have repeatedly shown that physical affection is a part of caring for your child. Now hear this because I said caring for your child, nothing else. Any, everything else falls under legal guidelines. As far as family goes, any other touch is illegal. Outside of family, is also illegal until the child reaches the age of consent. So according to a Cornell Law School, the age of consent refers to the age where one child can give meaningful consent. In other words, they need to understand what they're consenting to. Uh, if over the 18 or over the age of 18, meaningful consent is presumed, which to me is not always a good thing, but it's called learning experiences. However, the presumption may be negated if the person lacks capacity due to developmental disability and so forth and so on. You guys can read the rest of that. I'll leave it up for a minute. Now, does that mean that we can force tickle our kids? No, of course not. That's just cruel. 
now and those who are going oh well i guess you mean they can't do that don't be deliberately obtuse about this okay i have a point that i'm actually crawling towards slowly but stick with me the other issue is that making a child able to consent while not of legal age makes it normal do you understand what I'm talking about here? Do you? This can be a very dangerous area to get into. Once it's established that a child under the legal age of consent can consent, you've opened the door from, for some pretty horrible stuff. Like, transient kids who don't understand the lifelong ramifications of having their bodies physically and medic you know uh, drug altered like those creeps who get off on kids and are fighting for the same rights as the lgb did once a child consenting is normalized all they have to do is say the child consented, and that is what they're fighting for. They are deliberately trying to get this into law. If you don't believe me, go Google it. And if you think, oh, well, that will never happen, did you ever think transitioning four-year-olds would happen? Look how normal it's becoming to transition small children to permanently alter their bodies. You know, 50 years ago, even 30 years ago, people were thinking, yeah, and whether you agree with it or not isn't the point, but people were thinking LGB rights will never happen. Abortion, you know, being allowed would never happen. And it did. Now, how long will it be before these child attracted, what are they called? Minor attracted persons? I would say the word, but then YouTube would slap me with a strike or something, which is ridiculous, which is why I'm also uploading some videos onto Rumble. Um... You know, it's it's being allowed. Kids being allowed to consent to life-altering situations is being allowed. Kids consenting to this woke parenting thing, or I should say this woke parenting, having kids consent is not necessarily a good thing. I mean, when child predators want to fight, what do you think they're going to use as proof a child can consent? So, what are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments. And you guys have a great day and we'll see you next time. Love you fam. Bye.